My name is Jeff Ricca. Let's do a little walk around of the exterior of this and show you exactly what we did and what we are using from the factory. Easy enough, let's just go to the front. Factory grill end up just opening up a little bit. That gives us a better cooling, more airflow to the radiator. It's still utilizing the factory front end. From uh, our partners over in Korea, Hyundai End Festival, we developed a brake, air brake duct out of carbon fiber, made here just in the United States, and yet utilizes a three inch tube that goes right to our uh, AP brake system. Very helpful, very sleek, um, looks like a factory part. Hood wise, um, this is still a prototype hood. We're still working with uh, our good friend that is gonna make a carbon fiber hood. So we ended up just putting louvers to get some uh, hot air coming out of the engine bay using the uh, airflow passing over it. Um, and then simple hood pins. We're not doing anything crazy with this. One thing that is uh, something that a lot of people might has questioned us about is these cars come with a sunroof. And they come with a sunroof on the DCT models. We are using the DCT car. So we needed to remove the sunroof. And it was perfect for us because we just stripped it off, used a non-DCT in a manual transmission version, and did our roll cage, and then just overlaid a factory part with no problems. We are using a, and this is straight from Hyundai Motorsport, a TCR wing. All we're doing really is uh, buying the part from Hyundai Motorsport, welding our tabs onto the trunk to be securely mounted, and we have a tuning function right here with multiple angles that we could use um, for any type of tuning we need. And it's front-wheel drive, it does help. A lot of people say that it doesn't because it's front-wheel drive. We couldn't go fast without it, trust me. All right guys, so this is our interior. We have our kill switch in here utilizing a Motec C125. We're still using the factory dash. We're using a aftermarket racing steering wheel, and we made this driver functional panel, which will allow us to do our uh, modes. So we can get into end mode, or we can get it into our custom mode, just by holding that. And then we actually have our speed limiter, which is actually the factory cruise control but limits on what we need to for speed. So we'll just hit the speed limit and then we could adjust the speed up or down where we need to. Our M1 and M2, which is our MoTeC buttons, which switches our MoTeC uh, screens, turns off all our alarms. Um, from there, we have our aftermarket paddle shifters, which are our magnetic. Our safety is all within the, the rule set that the uh, SRO um, puts, sets forward. So we'll have our right side net, our left side net, um, our racing button seat from Sparco, which are also adjustable. Um, our uh, six point Sparco uh, restraint system and our Sparco fire system. We ended up putting a ballast system in here required by the by the sanctioning body to uh, allow us for any type of BOP changes. And we actually have air jacks too. We have uh, two air jacks in the corners and two in the back. So a total of four in this car. So we get to raise the car uh, in our pit lane or our paddock when we're doing servicing. Just makes it a lot easier and faster for our crew members. Roll cages, we build them in-house all through our spec of what the series requires, DOM tubing. We also, uh, utilize the Hyundai TCR door panels just for a cleaner look. Another cool thing we talked about before was the, the ATL 80 liter fuel cell that we put in this car. We cut the uh, floor, welded this in, and then we made this pretty cool billet aluminum piece um, to utilize the factory fuel pickup tube, um, fuel pump assembly. And the reason why we did that is this is most, one of the most important things. This is actually a fuel pump ECU, and it's pretty complicated to be working with this thing because it does tie in with the ECU. So to make our lives simple, we decided to use the factory stuff and adapt that to the fuel cell. So we have a nice bullet piece, um, an O-ringed setup, and a flange that allows the factory setup to just 
fall right into place and seal up nicely. And this is where we fuel our system with a quick release so we can get all our 80 liters in there. And let's talk about the engine bay. It might look pretty stock and the reason is the motor is 100% factory. Untouched, unopened, we don't do anything with the transmission or the engine. The only thing we've been touching is our electronic ECU. We do our engine mapping. Turbo, 100% factory, we do not touch that. The motor mounts is the only thing that we are allowed to play with and we play with a little bit uh, with PowerFlex engine mount and uh, training mount and we're using a, a Boomba uh, lower transmission mount. We're using a six element catch can. We are doing our required boost sensing from an AM boost sensor that the series regulates us to do um, and records through the MoTeC. And then we have our oil pressure sensor that we run off of the oil filter housing. And then we have a required pump out quick disconnect for the series. And this is where we pump out fuel after a session so we understand our burn rates, we understand um, what we're working with on with no fuel, and then when they do our scrutinizing uh, and weighing the car, it has to be with no fuel in it. So we would hook up our quick release and we have a fuel pump out switch here, which we act as a dead man, and you push, activates the fuel pump and allows fuel to be pumped out of the fuel cell. We change our radiator. We don't have the AC system anymore, so we're allowed to run a radiator that's much thicker, and it was a custom build for us through CNR and PWR radiators. And they also did our intercooler too. So it's a, uh, a module setup where the intercooler mounts to the radiator and the radiator then mounts to the radiator support. One of the cool features that we've done with the car and that is these massive AP racing calipers and a 368 millimeter rotor. Same caliper we've been using on a lot of our platforms, but pad is 25 millimeters thick. Allows for much better cooling, uh, much better braking and brake control, especially in your threshold braking in a sprint race with these Pirellis that we use. We worked with KW's Hyundai N variant coilover system. It's a two-way um, system, meaning there's a rebound and compression. It's a non-remote and it was developed just for the Hyundai N Festival in Korea. So that's why you'll see the Hyundai N branding here. There's a bunch of uh, branding that just says Hyundai on it. Um, we're homologated spring rates, so we'll have a couple sets of different spring rates we run. Um, we do our adjustments all through here, and we'll have our uh, compression and rebound adjustments uh, on opposite corners of the damper. We do our camber as well, on the, since the McPherson. Uh, on the top and we could also with our eccentric uh, do it down here which is pretty cool because we could change our roll centers to a little bit um, when we do adjustments from both sides. Everything on here with suspension components is a spherical, there's no factory uh, bushings. So we teamed up with SPL parts and developed caster bushings. These caster bushings are pretty cool because they're off-centered, allowing us to change the caster by changing the, the lower control and to come in or out. So it's a couple of things here. We're still using the KW uh, two ways here with our rebound and adjustment there, our compression the bound here. And we're actually using factory sway bars. Yes, factory sway bars, because it works very well. But we do SPL end links, uh, we're doing an SPL upper control arm and tow rod, all designed for the Elantra. It is different from the Veloster, so keep that in mind that uh, that is something that we had to change just specifically for this car. Our front trailing arm has our SPL spherical as well. Exhaust we made in-house, this is straight exhaust. We eliminate the exhaust valve just because we don't need it as a race car. So, um, simple straight through as much airflow we can get and running it alongside with the fuel cell um, just makes it more streamlined. We're still utilizing the factory rear brakes and this works very well. We're using this factory rotor with the factory brake pad and the factory caliper. No changes there. It works very well with us. Paired with the, I think we're using Paget's uh, RST5s in the front 
Sometimes we run a couple uh, variants with PFC and we test it a little bit with Hawks, um, but we really like the Paget RST5 on this chassis with the factory brakes in the rear. I really appreciate you, know, you guys watching this and if you have any questions, you always comment in the video below, but otherwise I'll see you guys at the racetrack.